Okay, we'll start at the beginning. Three o'clock. Thank you for being here. Today's video will be a boots on the ground exploration. Welcome. So, I start out with a yearning to go on a trip. It felt like it had been some time, the winter has been long, and we jumped in the rig and got out. Originally I was gonna go to a Cracker Barrel in Provo and stay there for the night, and eat there in the morning. I did stay there for the night, but did not eat. I just didn't have an appetite. But I did check out Provo, and downtown was absolutely awesome. I could have spent a lot more time. It was Sunday, and that's an absolute blessing in Utah. I mean, if you just want to be out and about and not have a lot of people around. But all these buildings were spectacular. I got some drone footage of this library, and it was snowing on and off the night before had snowed. All my plans seemed to change, but I had no problem with it. I just kind of went with the flow and had a great experience. Found some good evidence for the old world existing here in Provo, which is an hour drive south of Salt Lake City. Here I was tipped off that there were lime kilns, and we went up here to have a look. It was very difficult to determine where to park here. It's just on the side of a mountain, and there's houses all around, and just like the kilns in Salt Lake City, I had a very difficult time accessing a place to park. Once I was up here, well, there were roads and ruins, everywhere from another time. We would be told the time would be the 1850s. I mean, we can discuss the logistics of Salt Lake City, but again, this is an hour in a car south of Salt Lake City. In 1849, 33 Mormon families from Salt Lake City established Fort Utah, which is essentially Provo today. 33 families and the ruins that we will look at today are also dated to this time period. So these 33 Mormon families would have also have built these kilns, if we're to believe the story. 2023 minus 1850 equals 173 years. So these ruins, according to the mainstream, are 173 years old, if we're to buy that. And here we're approaching the first set of kilns, just like the other ones, totally buried. So again, everything. It's not just the building of the kilns, but the destruction, the partial burial of these sites also will have to be within this 173 year period. So we had an absolute ball. I mean, this was just a paradise for me, for this research for chief all the dogs were off leash and nice and in fact i was really really pleased with provo provo gets the city of the year award in my opinion i was recently talking to somebody and i told them all i expect of government are good roads that's it just fire everybody else that's not working in the roads department and certainly increase their budget i don't know i mean i would like more, but seeing how things are going, let's just bring it back to the basics. The United States of Rhodes, that's it. And look at what they were doing back then. Here we go. Here are 1850s ruins. They certainly could have given us perfect roads. And really my point is I've done a lot of driving around from small towns to big cities and the roads are in terrible condition. We can't even maintain the roads today. And here in the 1850s, if we're to believe the story, these horse and wagoners are building ovens like this in the mountains, high in the mountains. So here we go, the first set. I have a little peek inside. 
but more brick, more block sections back here that are inaccessible, but nothing was burnt back there. And just like all the other kilns I viewed in Salt Lake City up in the foothills, these had a very similar look. Several spanning across the front and also seeming to have been partially repaired. One of them seemed like it had been recently used. And really this led to something very interesting. A discovery that I wasn't expecting. There's actually a series of these ruins spanning all up the mountain that I have pinned on the Google Earth. And I have hesitate to share because I haven't explored it all. But I will show you everything I explored on this day. So here we can have a little peek inside one of them. Really interesting condition. Not seeming like anyone would build this way. I mean, we can see the condition of the brick almost returning to nature. And I was trying to find a stamp. Did find one, but not on this type of brick. Here we see a combination of Cream City brick, which is typically not a fire brick. And I do backtrack back to this point. When you're doing boots on the ground, it's really exciting. And we can see this road here. One road, another above it, another above it. I mean, it's it's all essentially roads and paved. Paved, but in ruins. So here I'm approaching some of these, what we would be told are lime. The lime that will have been cooked. And this is part of my absolutely fascinating discovery. I'll come back to this point and we'll poke around at these white mounds. And what I discover is absolutely fascinating. So here you can see one kind of more concrete building in ruins. And then we see this beautiful stone castle base, in my opinion. Really important to look at this area from above. You can actually see how much distance this project spanned across. 1850s again you read their narrative with me a moment ago 33 modest families and then someone is taking the time out here you can see how steep it is i'm not sure if the camera is really capturing this but we're just going straight up here we can see brick now brick fused in rock in ruins and all of this just continues in all directions what i will capture is just a fraction of what can be discovered and what has been removed from this site, who knows, or destroyed. So now I'm on top of the kiln, so you can see that there's been some effort to pretty much make a little parking area up here, but there's no driving a car up here. But essentially we have like what looks like an asphalt. And asphalt is its own topic of research that crosses my path over and over. But anyway, you can see the cooked condition of this canyon that we're in. Here I see openings. It would be very difficult to get up to a lot of these points. It could be done, but very challenging terrain. Absolutely beautiful. And here we can see the ruins everywhere. Chunks of concrete with moss, bricks everywhere. Here we can see where I am. These were some of the points that I had marked that were possible parking spots. And here there were three openings, I believe. I'm going to look into one of them a little closer here. I actually didn't even find the specific oven that I was looking for. One of the ovens I saw on the internet. It. But here is a great look. You can see people have graffitied in here. But you can see the quality and the mass of the building. Chief again eating little pooplets. And here I have a little peek inside. And we can actually see some metalwork embedded in here. This does look like there has been some burning at one point. But not the kind of space or fire that would justify building this giant like three-story structure. No. Here again we can see another one. And again, 173 years and all of this is like buried. Like it's been dug out. Here again, a little usage. Somebody had thrown a mattress in here. Perfect little place to rest. And a tire. 
really interesting. And here we can see the stone blockage. The blockage I find everywhere makes up this foundation, essentially. We can see what looks like a concrete, and here a stamped brick. Walsh, it looks like. I'm not sure, because there's kind of some cookage on the end. And I'm not sure if I'm really able to capture this. Here we can see bricks fused on the underside of what looks like concrete. Again, the ruins of 1850. You can see how the brick goes down and down, just as I experienced in Sunnyside, Utah, at the Coke ovens. There was no bottom to be found. Here again, we can see bricks just poking out. This area really did seem blasted. And here I've come to this part that I was not expecting. And I think this is a great case for Meltology and really everything. Really, this is a great case for Sodom and Gomorrah. When we look at Sodom and Gomorrah, we see these ash kind of powdered, white powdered remains of buildings. And even this, when I first walked up to it, I just kept walking. I said, oh, just a pile of white lime or something. But no, everything looks soft and cocoa-like from afar until you move in closer and you realize it's all chunky and cooked. So here we go. Here, these piles, what look like piles of lime, actually have, or are, structures completely blasted. Now here, I'm gonna really get in close to these. I'll actually shimmy up here and stick the camera right in the hole. And here you go, I mean, here's another one. This is actually the one that got my attention initially, because of the sharp, jagged angles that we can see. And it's hard as concrete, and yet this is the inside of a white pile of moundage, or what looks like a pile of moundage. Here again, another look. We can even see impressions of brick in there and stone. This has been annihilated. Here I go in closer to this one. So what exactly happened here? I think a little mouse has made a home in here, perhaps. That was hard as a rock and just absolutely fascinating. This is a structure. It looks like a pile of nothing until you get up close. Now it goes in two directions. You can see in here and you can see in here square and perfect and just looking like a pile of white nothing here the condition of this rebar 175 years or is it heat damaged all of this really just seeming bombed and here we can see the different layering so looking like white on top until you get up here to where we are. Here again, looking like asphalt, just chunks of cooked out material. We see the roads, and then when I zoomed up here, this was another treat. We have a little Cappadocia window going on here. Just a lot I would like to explore. This is actually awesome. And then just chunks of concrete formed in blocks covered in moss like this on my way down. I thought that was pretty interesting, the way it had been poured in this polygonal fashion. So that was pretty much the end of the lime kiln or oven or whatever. But it was a wonderful exploration, and like I said, I'm gonna do a part two. I have some other sites way up the mountain, and now that would really not make any sense. We were already pretty up there, and so I headed back. And it just seemed like the day that everything lined up. This next spot I'm going to share with you is one I've always wanted to explore. It's only about 10 minutes away, but it's on a busy highway. Really busy. And usually I'm trying to take pictures while I'm driving. And on this particular day, I stopped and took some pictures, like you can see here. And I even pulled out my super camera and really zoomed in. And we're gonna look at that for part two. Okay, so part two, this building. Before I even did this research, I thought this looked like a building with blocks and everything. This most recent visit, it looked like these buildings had collapsed on each other. This one, boom, boom, archway here, filled in. Let's look at some more. As we zoom into this blockage, I don't know how geology would explain this one. And it's not enough to just look like a melted building. 
But we have a train running through this baby. And actually a park, as I discovered at the base. Here I zoom in as much as I can with my phone. But in a minute here, I'll show you the footage I took with my zoom lens. A lot of openings and walls jutting out, right angles. And then here, this excellent road or railway slamming into the mountain and through it. You can see how it continues through it, but then doesn't seem to go anywhere unless it takes a right turn into the mountain. But like I said, it's a park, it's all abandoned now. I was certain that it was still in operation all these years, looking so good, but also puzzled. Like I said, it's a very busy road and you're driving by at 70 miles an hour, cars in front and behind you. And yeah, I'm just sticking my head out the window, trying to get a peek, and I was really glad I pulled over this time. Here you can see very square openings up here that I would have never noticed in my car at 70 miles an hour. Here a big opening, a big square right here, and then square, square, all melted and cooked, but yet seeing the impressions, no doubt, right? A video is nice because you're just kind of shooting everything, and you can pause like I am now. We can examine all the details, and many of you will notice things that I'm not even seeing. Let's pause here, and I should show you real quick what it looks like on Google Earth. Just stupid. I mean, clearly somebody has adjusted the contrast to make it uninteresting. Here I'm zooming into the railroad that just slams through the rock, continues, looks like it's been cooked out. Pretty unbelievable. Again, something that's interested me for years. And sometimes you just have to pull over, even if it means slowing down and pissing off the person behind you. F the person behind you. Why are they in such a hurry anyway? To get home to their TV and wife and chicken dinner? No. So here's a picture I took with my zoom lens, and I figured we'd be able to zoom in even more as we are now. And sure as shizzle, look at this. What kind of construction method is this? I mean, at first I thought it was just a clean concrete up here, but it has the same pattern. It's just a little bit better preserved. It has the same pattern as this mountain. Unbelievable. And essentially this will be the same, but even more well preserved. This is just nuts. Look at this. And let's continue. Look at this. What of this? Why? No, there's no question here. Nobody does this. Not in this old time period. Enormous feat of engineering here in absolute ruins, now a park. What was this like before they turned it into a park? Well, it's pretty clear, but also not. Here, I think I zoomed in a little more. So I don't know. This is pretty baffling. Let's look at this part again. It looks like we can see some supports, some columns here. Unbelievable. So here I'll have to fly my drone into next time. So this is really strange. Let me know your thoughts. I could use them. What do you think we're seeing here? This is just the pocket of preservation. In my opinion, it looked like a building even before seeing this part. Here's that site. Here's Provo. Here is the canyon. Totally unimpressive. Here is where the road or train slammed into the mountain and really uninteresting. Even the rock, you can see how they've overexposed it so we don't see any of the blockage. I mean, it was all made of block, not from this perspective. And lastly, in this little bonus, I thought I would show you the drone footage that I took. I made a video, or at least a segment, about this building in the past. This is the library, and this goes back to the beginning. Oversized today, and most certainly oversized then. We see the mud flood windows. And again, like I started this video out with, 173 years. So all this, I love the brick when it's facing that way. All of this, the ruins of a people 
that have existed here for 173 years. I love these details too, at the top. And these, I don't know what, chimneys? Just really decorative. And the tech up here, with the spiky balls, all the chimneys appear to have been filled in. And really, I think this was industrious. It was never meant to be a library, and these may have been chimneys or smokestacks. And here, I think, of course, they've redone the roof, and that's about all they've done. I think even the bricking up of the windows may have been done by the original tenants or occupants of this building. But really beautiful, nonetheless, it really caught my eye when I discovered it, and I always wanted to check it out, and it just kind of happened on accident today. Here I zoom in a little closer and show that these two chimneys are not even built in the same fashion. I'm not sure why there's the extra piece jutting out of the back. And it's a very detailed feature, really unnecessary. Clearly somebody had extra bricks and time. And Provo really feels like an old time period. I mean, even the people are kind of old-fashioned, and I like it. Like I said, I really enjoyed my time in Provo and have awarded them the City of the Year. And here you can see the brick, how absolutely devastated it is. We can see like a stonework fused in over the windows here, just frivolously. Hair tapering up, serving as a support. And whoever built this building built the ovens that we started out the video off with. This is the same thing. It's the same thing that we see up there. The same multi-usage of brick. Here, the cream city on the outside, and then more of a traditional red on the inside. And here, it's the entryway to a giant, beautiful building. And up there on the mountain, where I was exploring, we barely see the tops of the arches. In fact, it looked exactly like this. Arch, and then I went in there, and then there was a smaller archway that they had turned into a makeshift kiln. And maybe I could flash a picture of the kilns in Salt Lake City also looking like entryways, like this, as opposed to kilns. And down here, a different style of brick. And to the left we can see the blockage. The blockage that's found everywhere. All over the realm, really. And one more last little... Look, I wanted to zoom in to the date. It still says BYU Academy, so it was repurposed several times. First the Academy, and here we see 1891 on the right side. Look at the ruins, look at the condition of the brick here. But really, really elegant. A full circle of brick. I mean, look at the way that they have constructed this. This is unbelievable. The circle, not just an art, full circle with the capstones being on the bottom. Super cool. I'm just semi-speechless. I don't even know if this video is going to do any of this justice. I'm not sure how to share it, but somehow I will. So I think that's it for this week. I hope you enjoyed. Do have a blessed day. I love you all, and I'll see you next week.